Hello, everybody, and welcome to. No, no, I, di I didn't have. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Make Anime Great Again: A Retrospective on Trends in Anime Quality, presented by the Foundation for the Eradication of Gen Five Pokemon. I'm Max. I'm Andrew. And that—that's who we are. You can uh, follow us on Twitter at uh, Fifth Gen, not PKMN. You can also not do that because Twitter is a hellscape. If you like to follow us on anything else, if you're calling it X, just don't. Yeah, just leave. I like to live in a world where Twitter was only really problematic and not insurmountably problematic. Yeah, we, we have business back. cards if you want to follow us on anything else. Yeah, we just it, it has our it has we have a logo now. It's really cute. I'm also going to give a pedal point to someone. I don't know how we're going to do that yet, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so I mean to start, I think we have to talk about like the history of anime. Yeah. Because like if we're going to make it great again, we have to establish when it was great. But before that, we have to establish when, like, its origins. So I, I think that this is a really easy question to start it off with. So I'm going to ask all of you to shout out, uh, in a, at the count of three, what country anime came from. Okay? One, two, three. China. America. <laughs> They're already wrong. <laughs> Not a good start. See, that's the thing. You've fallen for the propaganda. And you need to get that out of your head. We need to reverse all of the learning you've gone through. Because the thing is, you're probably like, oh, Astro Boy is the first anime, and you're wrong. Because Osama Tetsuka, the creator of Astro Boy, actually credits much of his process to the Scrooge McDuck comics. Uh, in fact, here is a uh, presumably love letter, very explicit, that Osama Tetsuka set, sent to Carl Barks to uh, tell him how much he loves his work and uh, probably suggested to throw some OCs in there. But, you know, that's how it goes. So uh, Astro Boy is just a derivative of DuckTales. And I know what you're saying, Max, the DuckTales were comics. Astro Boy was an animated series. I'm like, okay, fine. If you want to be a pedantic little butt about it, we'll go with the first serialized animated cartoon, which still was not Astro Boy. It was Crusader Rabbit. Which, as we all know, is based off of the Crusades. <laughs> and now another question. Uh, who was the first emperor of Byzantium? Say it with me on three. One, two, three. Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Which means the Roman Empire, anime. Catholicism, anime. The Crusades. Yeah, the fan wars. <laughs> Crusader Rabbit, anime. Astro Boy, a really weird derivative. And everyone in Japan knows this. They teach this in the grade schools. Have you ever wondered why Super Saiyan hair is golden yellow? It's pay homage to Scrooge McDuck's vast wealth. You still did this section. Oh, I did this too. Cool. Um, no, yeah, you yeah, do I, this, you Andrew. Do the, okay, fine. I can't get out of work anymore. <laughs> but so we go Mario's back, just but, always so, trying to get away with not doing anything. Yeah, Luigi needs to stand up for himself sometimes. He needs to know. But anyway, so we go back and look at these classic anime like DuckTales or Gigantor. You know the one thing they had in common? That was that they were dubbed into English because it's the correct language for anime. I'm speaking it now and you understand me. So therefore, it must be the proper language to tell things about people in. I mean, look at this. We, we know that English is great because we're speaking it now. But let's, let's look at some, some numbers behind this. So if you look at this chart of Proto-Indo-European languages, you'll see English over there. It's on the West Germanic fork. But... You know, if we look, we don't see Japanese on this list. It's not a Proto-Indo-European language. It just doesn't, just, so we, it must not be a language, right? So we took a world chart to visualize this. So all of the countries that are in green speak primarily a Proto-Indo-European language. All other countries are in blue. I don't see any blue countries on this map, so clearly we can conclude nobody speaks Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, J Japan is fake news, it's true. Uh, and this is, it's just so well known. In Japan, when they made a joint venture to produce the Ramayama anime with uh, the nation of India, they, they released it in the one true language. That was, of course, English, with music in Sanskrit and weird characters on the bottom of the screen in what is presumably gibberish that some people know of as Nihongos. And, I mean, it's just... How, how can you argue with this? Vishnu, the preserver herself, 
has decreed ducktails a holy text, and therefore English is the divine language. So this is when Amer anime was great. And America was on top. They were doing a great job. So they had the peak of anime in Super Friends. I mean, it's very colorful. I can see makeout characters. And Japan was doing like weird blobs, color bleeds. I can't tell what's going on there. I can't tell if there's I mean, 17 characters or two. In the, in the motion on Super Friends, it's so fluid. Yeah, it's, it's just, great. It's beautiful. So this was the 70s. And then we move on to the 80s, and things start to, to lose. America doesn't kind of hold their heads up so high. They, they perfected humans, so they tried to branch out into robots, and it wasn't quite as smooth with Transformers. Japan started to kind of find their niche with body horror. And they really went into that kind of hard. It's not, not nearly as expressive, though. You know, for kids. <laughs> and then we got the 90s. American animation really kind of starts falling apart as American animators tried to follow like new trends in the body horror and disfigurement genres. With Street Sharks, it, I mean, it asks the age-old question of uh, what happens when they, a shark stops skateboarding. Do they die? No, they get canceled. <laughs> and then Japan really perfected that body horror with uh, Ghosts in the Shell. And of course, they, they decided to perfect the genre itself with the Christmas comedy classic Grave of the Fireflies. <laughs> That's the funniest movie I've ever seen. I don't know what you guys are smoking. <laughs> it's a real disco inferno. So, at this point, it, it's clear. Japan has stolen what is rightfully ours. And tried to, you know, just critique war with it. You can't do that. This is an American art form. You know what we have to do? We have to take it back. So, we are going to go to Japan and... Uh, force them to open, the, I mean, engage in trade with them. <laughs> and you know what, I think it, it's the 90s. We've got a boat, we're ready. We're, we're even gonna send Matthew Perry, wait. Oh. No, sorry, that one died. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna send our new Matthew Perry, oh wait. That one also died. Whoops. It's, it's okay, it's the 90s. We don't, we don't need to go by boat, that's boring. We're gonna go by space boat. We're going to send a ship, we're going to send a robot, it's going to be voiced by Steve Blum, and he's going to reclaim anime and bring it back to the Holy Land, which is, I don't know, Tulsa, Oklahoma or something. And boy, did he do a good job. Because yeah. I know, that's why I got an anime, and therefore everyone in this room, that's how they got an anime. In fact, it was so powerful that Toonami, like, changed the world with the anime it brought back to the United States. So we're going to go ahead and touch on some of the anime that they brought and how it affected the world. The first, of course, being Cowboy Bebop. Like, it was novel for its time. It had realistic animations. Like, the, the guys were all cool. And with the CIA, the government saw this. They're like, wait, we don't have to fake a moon landing. We can just hire some Japanese animators. We, we don't have to go to the moon and make Russians look bad. We, we don't, we, this is great. I mean, look at these two images. They are identical. I can't tell the difference between them. One's, one of them might be anime. Yeah, Russia could have just paid some North Koreans, but instead they launched a dog into space. That's so... Yeah, I know. Le Leica didn't deserve that. <laughs> I think Cowboy Bebop killed Leica. Why did we have to draw Ayn on the moon? If we didn't do that, it would have been fine. <laughs> she would have lived. The Russians are just too full of themselves. <laughs> we, we stretched. I think you can agree. America stretched. Uh, but I think there's a more transformative anime from the 90s, and that is, of course, Beyblade. <laughs> Bursting onto the scene. Now, I know what you're saying, Thanks. They're battle tops. And what I have to say is, well, clearly, you've been brainwashed again with all this historical revisionism. It wasn't the UFOs that built the pyramids. It was the Beyblades. <laughs> they just look the same. This guy knows it. He just, he just knows that Beyblades are a step too far for the average American, so he has to code it in aliens and racism. <laughs> When Moses demanded that Pharaoh let his people go, do you want to know what the next three words he uttered were? Let it rip. <laughs> That's right. Beyblades <laughs> helped the Exodus. They've been there for so many historical moments in the world, from this to the signing of the Declaration of Independence. 
Have you ever wondered why Jan John Hancock's signature is so perfect? He's a baby. I think it's weird that I always, like, I do this, like, in three, bit in three panels, and the Beyblade's always on a different person. I don't know who John Hancock is. No one knows who John Hancock is. It doesn't matter, he's the Beyblade. Additionally, they invented the concept of sports. You ever wondered why Roman Colosseums are round? It's not so the Lions get a better workout when they're chasing down the Christians for, a date for their lunch. It's so the Beyblades get a better workout when they're chasing down the Christians for their lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lions are fake. I mean, lions are real, but the lions in the Colosseums are fake news. And why don't we hear about Because they don't want to teach it to you in schools. <laughs> Ron DeSantis banned it. Like, I'm sorry, it's just what happened. So... But the thing is, there's so many other great 90s anime we can talk about, and we're just, we have to skip over them, you know? Zoid's Chaotic Century. <laughs> One of you is like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> Zoid's New Century. <laughs> Zoid's Trigun Century. <laughs> Zoid's Pokemon Century. <laughs> and the most brutal and violent of them all, Zoid's Hamtaro Century. <laughs> I personally remember when Boss Boss single-handedly dismembered Bijou, Cappy, Maxwell. My hamster took ten sides. But there's, there's one more that we have to touch on. There's one more peak 90s anime that influenced our world today. And it, of course, features Toru. <laughs> Andrew. Oh, yes, Max? That's the wrong Toru. Oh, I'm sorry. But you, you put Fruits Basket on here. Yeah, I just watched that the other month. It was good. Which, which, which version? The, the newer one. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Um, so why did you mess up the slide? I, just, uh, I don't know. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Toru. Yeah, see? <laughs> don't kill me. I should have gone back to paying people on Fiverr for this. <laughs> Toru. There we go, our boy, the man. Uh, not only did it introduce us to, I mean, this strapping young gentleman, but it invented the concept of archeology span <laughs> and the collecting of artifacts <laughs> and inspired a way for uh, millions of men in their 20s to waste all their money. And it was Ganondorf's breakout role. <laughs> this man is the Christian Bale before there was a Christian Bale. He did, he did uh, Link to the Past, sorry, uh, he did Ocarina of Time right after this. Look at how much weight he lost for this role. <laughs> then he put it all back on. Ganondorf, he, he's amazing. I am, of course, talking about Jackie Chan Adventures. <laughs> <laughs> the absolute pinnacle of 90s anime, released in the year 2000. Starring Jackie Chan as he goes on his various adventures with his, I, I don't really know what the relation is with Jade and Uncle, and Toru, and that weird wrestler guy, and you know, they fight dragons, and they collect talismans, and they teach me good, good moral lessons. Honestly, it's the greatest show ever made, and if you haven't seen it, uh, it's on YouTube. Go watch it right now. Leave the panel, leave the con, go to your hotel room, come back after you finish season four. <laughs> and we, we, can, we can announce this We now, can. Right? We can? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. So uh, we are officially announcing that we are doing a Kickstarter to bring back Jackie Chan Adventures. Uh, in in collaboration with Crunchyroll. <laughs> and I know what you're saying. We're, uh, we're asking for a lot, $100 million for the trailer of the pilot. But not only are we going to have Tom Hanks voice Jackie Chan, but he's going to draw the entire trailer by hand. Because if you're good at one art, you're good at every art. That's just how it works. Yeah. And I know you may have heard some misinformation, like Crunchyroll isn't involved and they've been sending us various cease and desist orders. But you know what? I don't care. They're going to help us pay for it. After what they've done to anime, we deserve this. <laughs> but what made these 90s anime hit so hard? So that's a question we decided to delve into with our intensive research, and we came out with a couple high point, or reasons. First of which is they, they really set up realistic body proportions that you could work towards. Like, you spend like a one, one day a week, you can get this in a month, right? Clearly. Easy. You, everyone can do it. Yeah, we're all just not trying. Second, 
Important, important morals for the kids. I mean, if you're going to watch a show and your kid's going to sit there and watch somebody beat the teeth out of somebody, that you want them to have some good takeaway that you can pret- pretend to pass off for. I, I don't think Chuck Norris has ever given anyone good advice. No, but the Cookie Monster does. Ooh. <laughs> no, he's been bought out by a big, big vegetable. Ooh. We're just going to ignore him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Then, of course. Eat, he wants you to eat asparagus. Punching was always the answer. Like, look, if you had a problem, you just punched it and it went away. And if that didn't work, you just powered up for like four episodes and punched it harder. (laughs) Solved all your problems. And I think the final most important thing they did in the 90s was they put Jackie Chan into everything. Look, we had Jackie Chan in Dragon Ball. We had Jackie Chan in Sailor Moon. And we had Jackie Chan in Street Fighter. It was great. (laughs) But all good things have to come to an end. When the 90s ended in the year 2004, when Jackie Chan Adventures was canceled. Ooh. And you can tell, like, Toru is so upset that he, re- he received his pink slip. Like, look, look, that man is distraught. He knows he's never going to do anything this meaningful again in his life. But, I mean, with Jackie Chan perfecting everything, we just needed a new show to come out and revolutionize storytelling and just come up with like existing tropes and really like refresh them for a new generation. And when, and when we needed that show Matt uh, most, it was declared not anime. (laughs) As we all know, my anime list is the uh, premier authority on what is and is not an anime. So, uh, and you know, according to them that they don't, it's not true. And I mean, it's, it's true. They, they got their degree in animeology from Patriotic Bible University. So, I mean, their, their list seems pretty legit to me. Uh, so let's, let's see what non-controversial opinions they have. Uh, so for it to be an anime, uh, the show has to be animated. Sorry, Citizen Kane fans. It's not making it. I know it's what you wanted, but that's just, uh, it sucks to be you. Oh, no. I just need to make my font small. Uh, Second, it has to be made in Japan for the Japanese. So uh, as we established earlier, the Sega Genesis, wait, actually later, as we will establish later, the Sega Genesis is not anime because it didn't sell well in Japan. But the Sega Saturn is anime because it was made to only sell in Japan. (laughs) Uh, Third, the show has to be animated on purpose. So sorry, Ethan Hawke and Julie Delphi. Uh, Just because you're a rotoscoped into animation doesn't make you anime. It has to actually just be drawn, uh, which I think is a rule they added in post to so VTubers could be counted as anime, if I'm going to be honest. Because it's really weird that rule one, it has to be animated. Rule two is made in Japan for Japanese audiences. And rule three is, no, really, it has to be animated. <laughs> and then uh, the fourth is it has to be its own work, not like a cut or edit of an existing show. And at this point, it's pretty convoluted. Like, I don't, I don't even know, like, what, what to do. And how strict is this even? Because Big O only got a second season because American audiences loved it so much. Uh, Space Dandy was released in America before Japan. And as we all know, Astro Boy is just fan fiction for <laughs> DuckTales. <laughs> but Avatar and Scott Pilgrim can't be anime? This is asinine. What do these all have in common? It's Max. <laughs> Every one of these shows has a mech in it. But Astro Boy does, but sorry, but Scott Pilgrim doesn't. And Avatar doesn't, which means unfortunately Avatar is an anime, but through the property of Loophole, Legend of Korra is. <laughs> and I know there was a Korra apologist panel here yesterday, and I don't want to engage with you. Uh, but when this is what's writing anime through the 2010s, you know we have a problem. How did anime get bad? Like, we've talked about the greatest anime, and now we're going to talk about the things that went wrong. Like, what they did from terrible things to just downright laziness, to lighting good ideas on fire. We're going to, we're going to dig into it, because we've, we've done our, like, ten minutes of research. Oh yeah, we used Google. Better yet, we just had opinions and validated them. First up, the characters. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah, I'm sorry, Corey's not in this house. Uh, so, uh, back in the 90s, oh man, male characters had so much drip. 
Use K layering up. I don't. I'm from California. I don't know how to do that. Like I went to Colorado and I'm like, wait, how, how am I supposed to wear clothes? It was weird. But Use K, he, he's nailed it. Uh, we have Tuxedo Mask who uh, dressed for a musical, but you know I think it's fine. That that man is attractive. And we have Naruto who has some really cool goggles that definitely didn't need to just be immediately retconned out of the series because of how complicated they were to draw. <laughs> But overall, like, defining characteristics. I can tell them apart in a crowd. It helps that Tuxedo Mask is wearing, like, a foot-tall hat. Uh, this is in comparison with modern characters. <laughs> can any of you tell me who each of them are? So, okay, okay, who's that? I can't block, I can't fact check you, so who is that? Yeah, see, that's what I assume. <laughs> see, if someone was able to nail them all, I would give them a pedal point. But, you know, it sucks to be you. All of those are still Biden. No, they're not. You know that's all Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this is in comparison. Uh, but I think that what they've done to male characters isn't nearly as bad as what they've done with female characters. Oh, now, yes. back, back in the 90s, there were two rules. Uh, they had to have pink clothes and blue hair. And I'm not saying that these are realistic proportions, because uh, Bulma is like 85% legs. <laughs> but like, I don't know, it could get worse. They could consult Bobby Hill. <laughs> and he could make some recommendations. And now this is what our female characters look like. And th these are unrealistic proportions. But, you know, if, if this is what you look like, by all means, come up and complain. We can discuss it after the panel, maybe over coffee or something. <laughs> but it's not just the, like, design of the characters that's bad. It's how they're written. Uh, so this is Lemon Irving from Mashal. I'm going to reference Mashal a lot in this uh, because I thought people watched it and was wrong. Uh, so her whole thing is, uh, her, her magic is BDSM. Like... <laughs> And her dream is to use it for those exact purposes. Because she likes that guy. For no reason. Uh, this is not particularly well written. Uh, Keiko from Yu Hakusho, show, relatively well written. Like, yeah, her character is very focused on how her relationship with Yusuke, but she's like a strong person in her own right. Uh, please ignore the fact that the mangaka listed her hobbies as cooking and cleaning. Oh. Yeah, uh, the 90s were a time. And, I mean, like, at least these three look different, despite the only, uh, the only thing that makes them different otherwise is they're all crushing on different dudes. Like, I mean, yeah, no, they look a little different, but otherwise their whole personality is, man, I just like this one guy. I mean, do you think we, we should move on from something less controversial than the sexism stuff in character design, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the political messaging of modern anime is pretty convoluted. Um, I'm not touching on Attack on Titan because I don't think you can throw a stick more than five feet without hitting two people that have very different opinions on the politics of Attack on Titan. And I've decided to not engage in that because I stopped watching that anime two episodes in. In the 90s, it was pretty wholesome. Um, I know you're saying they're lesbians. That's not true, uh, because in the American dub, they were cousins. <laughs> and this is just a, a normal way that cousins greet each other in several states. <laughs> I'm from California. That's fine. You're from Washington. That is, what, what have we got? Bans marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that, like the, the Deep South jokes, then also California. <laughs> so if you do make a joke about a Mississippian being a cousin marrier, they are not. Make sure to use Alabama. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, I guess besides advocating for cousin marriage in the 90s, I'm not, I'm not sure what's controversial about this. Putting LGBTQ plus characters in your show is just representation. It's not political. Uh, 
That's in direct contrast with a show, Mashal. So uh, Mashal has a secret basement of totally, that is totally, that they're totally not Hogwarts school. Uh, and then one of the girls of the group, who's totally not uh, Ginny, gets kidnapped. And then the wizard cops show up. And then it turns out that she has been kidnapped by uh, race supremacists who want to harvest the magical essence out of children. And I don't know about you, but when I hear secret basement run by race supremacists trying to harvest something out of children, I have assumed we've jumped into a QAnon conspiracy. <laughs> and I'm not really sure why, in the 2020s, we are making an anime adaptation of QAnon. That's weird. Right. Just go back to cousin marrying lesbians. Let's move on to something that I'm sure everyone has opinions about. The big three. Because back in the 90s, we had, we had there, was, there was DBZ. It was great. It kind of led the way and it kind of opened up the whole shonen genre. And then we had three competitors who try to fill that space as time went on, and they didn't really go anywhere. They didn't do anything new. They just kind of sat in the uncle's backyard drinking beer all the day. So they didn't innovate, which was really needed in the industry. So we're going to point touch on a couple things that they've done that the whole industry did as a whole. And the first, of course, is consistent releases. Because back in the 90s, like, there was an episode every week. I could plan my weekend around it. Like, every Friday, I knew there'd be a new DBZ episode. I could watch them power up, and that would sustain me for the week. Nowadays, it's... it's I mean, just the like, week is how long the power up took. Exactly. <laughs> but now it's, it's this whole season thing where you get, like, an episode for, like, two months, and then you have to wait, like, three years for the next few episodes. Or you have to wait ten years for the next season. I, if you're waiting ten years for another season, your fan base is dead. It's not only that the re releases have become inconsistent, but, like, I get confused about the extra episodes. So, like, Dr. Stone Season 3 comes out, and I'm really pumped, and I sit down, and I watch the first episode, and I'm like, who's this guy? Yes! yes! What's he doing here? Apparently, there was a special episode where they turned uh, Ishigami Village into a petrol state. <laughs> Without, and, like, I mean, sure, it's fine if you want to do, like, an, a movie or something to add, I, you didn't need to do that New World Dragged. You could have condensed it by two episodes and put that in there and put it together. But, like, when, where I come from, when an extra episode comes out, it's not canon. And, like, I, Tree of Might's pretty good, but it's great that I can watch it and leave and be like, well, can't wait for the next episode. But with this, I have to, like, set up a Google alert to tell me if the show I'm waiting for is going to be canon or not. And that's so much work. I don't have to wait for a review. I just want to go, like, oh, new season's out. Time to watch an episode. Not, oh, I guess I have to wait for the Fathom event for Rascal Doesn't Dream to watch the new movie. <laughs> we'll get into that. We have re no wait. I can just do that here. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like why? Why was the new movie a charter school ad? It was just an hour and a half long ad for a charter school, and I waited a year and a half for it. Huh? No one else saw it, right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah. I knew about it for a year and a half. Yeah, and I'm like, why, why isn't it releasing here? This, this is rude. I'm upset, okay? I waited way too long to watch an ad for a charter school. That's all I'm saying. Two and a half out of five stars. Uh, next, we have reboots. So uh, what, what, does, what do these have in common besides being a good anime? Well, besides being anime, we have a good one, an okay one, and uh, that one. They all got the reboot treatment. No, not bad CGI. <laughs> We got new versions of these shows. Like, yeah, let's just let's just come back, circle back, redo the show. Let's do Steins Gate, but uh, just up the cup sizes of all the girls, and then make the plot bad. <laughs> Steins Gate ended at episode 22. Anyone tells me otherwise is lying. Uh, we got whatever this was. At this point, I'm not sure if this is fan art or not, because I don't think anyone remembers that this came out. And then we have uh, Bleach's Thousand, World, Thousand Year Blood Arc, which demonstrated how useless Mal is because it was number one on there for a while. <laughs> so for all of you who are like, Free Run's great because it's number one on Mal, so was that. <laughs> so was that. And then we have the worst reboot of them all. The, um, the reboot for the classic 90s anime, 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd. <laughs> now, um, 
This show is about a, a boy who is turned into a dog because he's just an absolute degenerate. And he has to do 100 good deeds so that he can become human again. The problem is, is this show got canceled on his 40th deed. So Eddie McDowd has been wandering the earth being a dog, which honestly sounds great. I would love to be a dog. My dog's perfect. I would like to be her more than I'd like to be me. Uh, but Japan's like, you know, we've got this guy who turned into a dog, and he's, he's kind, of a, kind of a jerk. And, you know, we could reboot that, and suddenly we have 100 thirsts for Eddie McDowell. <laughs> Sports. Back in the 90s, sports anime was pretty cool because it was based on real things. Prince of Tennis came out and suddenly everyone wanted to play tennis. Venus and Serena Williams were inspired by this. Don't listen to the Will Smith movie. It's a lie. That's just Richard trying to get attention. Um, and, you know, going into the 2000s, sports anime was still going strong because it was still based on real sports. We had uh, basketball swimming, and volleyball. And then around 2011, it all fell apart when we had like competitive shogi or competitive lesbianism. I'm not really sure what Saki's about. <laughs> it, one of the two things. And now it's just, it's kind of a wasteland. There's still some good sports shows, but it's because they're not sports shows. Uh, Blue Lock is just a reboot of Sky High. <laughs> What's your super secret soccer power? Uh, Birdie Wing is just like the gay mafia, but golf. It's also fine. Uh, but then for every one of those, we get like, you know, this stuff. Uh, battle Butts. Fastest Finger First, which says it's a trivia anime, but with a title like that, it is not. As a professional trivia host, I can tell you that is not, that does not matter. Um, yeah, World of Tanks. Duh. Or I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just, maybe it's the adaptation of the Tanks minigame from We Play. Uh, and then competitive haiku. They're making, yeah, yeah, that is actually competitive. I need to be clear, that is not a joke, unlike my fur trapping anime. And we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the isekai genre. See, are you happy now? It's what you wanted. So, many people think that isekais are responsible for kind of the downfall of the anime industry, but isekais have been around for a really long time, all the way back to the, the Bible. You know, Jesus gets reincarnated into our world to try to save it, but he didn't do a good job. He doesn't save the world. <laughs> to, uh, to Mark Twain writing a, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, I think was kind of one of the more recognizable ones, but... And then we had Superbook, which was more like more modern anime or kind of isekai it was, concept. It was actually the first isekai anime was Superbook Bible stories. So it wasn't all, it wasn't a good genre to start, but we had some decent ones in, in the 90s when they kind of hit their stride. We had places that you actually would want to go to, Feudal Japan, the Demon Realm, and of course the Ghost Zone. <laughs> you know, places that you'd want to go to. And then, and then Dot .hack came out, and then people stopped wanting to go to these fantasy worlds. They instead just wanted to get turned into code. And then, and then they ran out of MOs. They just decided to use dating sims for everything. It's, it's kind of weird that they just started bleeding into light novels so heavily because light no books are supposed to be the enemy of video games. <laughs> they formed an alliance. And then, and then the, the fact that these were books kind of tells you why the names are so weird, but they just decided to go all in with like Russian nesting dolls. It's like fake worlds and fake worlds now. It's like, when does it stop? I mean, I, these screens are rotting our brains, I swear. And they all follow the same plot. It all starts out with some otaku, just absolute loser who can't meet anyone who doesn't hate him. And then he gets hit by a truck and now he's in the fantasy world and he can do magic for some reason. And he has more skill points than my cheat in a JRPG. That's not right. <laughs> And, and he's, he's women's favorite thing? I mean, I'm pretty sure personality doesn't change when you get reincarnated, and that was the problem in the first world. It's still a problem in the second world. And they all are named Kirito. Look, we got Kirito from Sword Art Online, Kirito from Goblin Slayer, Kirito from the greatest Kirito is reborn as a typical Kirito, and then finally, that time I was reincarnated as a Kirito. I mean, come on, guys. Name your character something different. I will say, 
the isekai genre did give us one good thing, and that is, of course, Truck. Because he's protecting our world from these losers. He's sending them off in the fantasy world because they'd just be a drain on our resources. And finally, we're getting an anime about Truck, and I hope they don't ruin his character, too. This might be out. I'm not going to look. I'm scared. Yeah, is it out? That's what I thought you were raising your hand for. Huh? Okay. Yeah, they, they don't really branch out. They all follow the same basic pattern, like even when trying to spread out. But we're going to move on yeah, from Isekai. We're, we're going we're gonna to stay on point. So, because anime is really good at staying on point nowadays. Because look, back in the 90s, I, I got lost very easily when watching anime. So they need to spend six episodes powering up because I thought, that gave me time to figure out what was going on and to, for, for me to really understand how planet busting that gigantic dump was gonna be. <laughs> and, and anime were very good at staying on point. Like they, they adapted the source material faithfully and consistently and never drifted off from the, the path. So you could, when you went in, you know that you were getting just the important content and nothing else. And then there's Moe. Yeah, back, back the, the odds were a, a scary time for Moe. We had these four girls who talked about eating snacks. These five girls who form a band. And eat snacks. And eat snacks. And of course, The Simpsons. <laughs> and here's the thing, nothing's changed. Those girls just went outside. The girls in the band learned to play instruments. The Simpsons is still on the air. And it's been bleeding into other genres. I was like, ooh, a mafia anime. No, the Kiba made worse. It's just Moe, but with guns. And I don't know, I think The Sopranos did a better job at that. <laughs> Not sure why you had to redo that. No. And, no. Then, and then these anime nowadays, they give us really unrealistic expectations for things. Like, no, a girl's not going to bully you. If you're in a relationship with a girl that's bullying you, that, that's abuse and you should get out of it. If someone's going to bully you, it's going to be the fat kid at school. And you're going to not feel good about that. You're not going to enjoy that. I definitely didn't get concussions. Um, speaking of trauma, so uh, in the ni in the nineties, I think anime really mastered childhood trauma. Um, there were so many different versions, like uh, Hey Arnold, whose parents decided they wanted to go to Costa Rica to take a nap, or uh, Yu Hakusho, whose mom was present but just drunk all the time, to the incredibly relatable story of Shinji Ikari. <laughs> whose dad just shows up one day and he's like, hey man, I need you to like come over and work for the secret government organization with me. I made this girl that's a clone of your mom, I think, and also here's this robot that has the soul of your mom that's powered by your trauma, and also like it's an angel, and you know, you know, like really relatable stuff. <laughs> but, and, and you know, they put work into this. This is a good story. Unlike, you know, Demon Slayer, where Tanjiro just walks home to a mom in a puddle of her own blood. And like, who hasn't had that happen to them on September 27th, 2007? I think that's just you. That's just me? Just you. Okay. I thought we all shared that. No. That. Just you. Let me click. We're gonna move on, because I don't want him to cry. <laughs> Anime nowadays is just too complicated. Like back in the 90s, we had very simple plots, like those who hunt elves where a, two, some teenagers and their friendly neighborhood tank gets transported into a fantasy world back in time, and to find the spell to get back to their world, they have to go di around disrobing female elves because the tattoo's been split up and tattooed on all the e e female elves in the world. It's like, see, that's very simple. I can understand that. Now we have like things like Bochi and the Rock, which is about like depression and being sad, and like I can't even talk about it with my therapist correctly. What makes me think I'm gonna understand it from anime? It's just, no, that's just too complicated, not for me. And 
they and telegraphing things was much better than two because like we had rivals and like you could tell who was gonna hate who just by looking at the characters like we had pink and blue they hate each other we had like black and yellow they hate each other the rich and the poor they hate each other it's very easy <laughs> but nowadays everyone looks the same you can't tell who's gonna fight who until the punches start flying it's it just doesn't I'm, on, make sense. I'm on team Vin Diesel to be very clear yeah. every time and then of course we have to talk about the mecha genre. I mean, it was a complete horny, like, mind, mind genre back with, like, Fulu Cooley, Zoids, and Love Hina. Like, everyone was, was a beast. And then it culminated with, of course, Charles Darwin's favorite anime, Gurren Lagann. So, what went wrong, though? But the anime really didn't, ch the whole genre didn't really change for Mecha. It's just the same horny kind of ness that was always there. And it, they just keep redoing the same thing over and over again. You know what did change? The robot designs, like back in the 90s, we had really great <laughs> robot designs, like nice, manly, look at those flames, they had sharp edges that you could cut your opponents on just by like punching them. I mean, and yeah, peak robot design. And nowadays it's just like curved, smooth edges. How are you going to like defeat anyone when you can't cut them on your shoulders? I mean, Gundam did the worst example, like they completely redid their robot designs in 30 years and just completely ruined the soul of it. It's just, it's not even comparable anymore. And like, it wasn't just the, the giant robots that were ruined. Like in the 90s, we were investing in real world resources in robotic pet dogs. Like they were Furbies you couldn't really cuddle. But 30 years later, those dogs are cops now. That's not an improvement. That's everything's going worse. I thought, I thought Mecca was supposed to defeat the power, not become it. <sighs> Spe speaking of the mighty falling. Uh, walking out. If, I don't know, but I talked about it in the panel, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it was Joey, Joey, yeah, Joey. Uh, so Bakudo is it's, it's the greatest anime, fight me on it. Uh, it's, it's got a lot going on, very complicated story uh, about bootleggers, immortal vampires, blah, 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 blah. Good thing, uh, intricate story. He follows it up with Dura which is, you know, like, what if, the, what if uh, Moot from 4chan started a gang? Um, <laughs> Honestly, still pretty good. A lot of stories going on. Um, good for its time. But, you know, he, he's made a third anime now. And it's a reverse isekai villain protagonist thing. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah, and I mean, if someone who can make this and this is now making this now, what hope is there for anybody? I think this, this, is, this is the dead mouth death play meal of anime going forward. So, why was it so great back then? And I think it's the dumb one. I think it was 4Kids. Yeah. So we're pretty sure that 4Kids actually made anime better. Because look, we had things like One Piece where they removed all those lollipops. You know your dentist gives you lollipops to get you cavities so you come back in. You know who has cigarettes? Your cool uncle. Like, you like your cool uncle, so you want cigarettes in your anime and cool things. Like, I mean, they did have to censor some things because Japan has a weird obsession with Pokeballs. But... I think I think that's a little too close to bestiality, so... Yeah. And, but they, they made things, and they improved on things. Like, you couldn't reference hell, because Japan's really weird into Christianity. So when it came to here, you had to call it the Shadow Realm, because you won't get in trouble for telling your brother to go to the Shadow Realm, but you will get in trouble for telling your brother to go to hell. And then, of course, one of the most important things they did was they, when they re-released E.T., they removed all of the guns. Because they know that kids aren't supposed to learn about guns from anime. They're supposed to learn about them in schools. <laughs> this list is incomplete. You can help by expanding it. <laughs> When we had companies dubbing anime, there were only so many shows that were out. It was easy to see everything, and we had an established canon. If you didn't see at least six of these eight shows, you were a fake fan. And unfortunately for me, no, 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 yes, yes, not really, yes, yes, I'm a fake fan. Sorry, man, why do people like chill bits? But uh, it allowed for some really good gatekeeping so we could keep all the people we didn't like out of the community, you know, normies. Uh, but then, suddenly, you know, the mid-aughts hit, and you didn't have to go to Sam Goody to hope they had the DVD box set of the anime you wanted to watch. You could just download a virus. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and it's like you go online and like there are people fan subbing things and you're like I don't know what comfort is but I mean it's not in English so it's probably more authentic let's watch it why are these guys just turning into girls with guns I'm confused and you know everyone was watching anything now the gates were open no one was stopping the trash from Japan from getting in and now we have like 53 shows a season and no like I'm too busy for that you need like this kind of setup where you have three monitors playing shows simultaneously. And even then you don't get a potty break. You just have to have some buckets. I just, I just want a simpler time. And the closest we have is what's being dubbed now. So I, here, here are some, here's some anime. So let's just see, you know, what's being dubbed and therefore is worth watching. Yep. Cause I think that's the way you have to do it. Yeah. Rising of shield hero, obvious classic. Uh, I heard season two is amazing. <laughs> Uh, Rascal doesn't dream of Bunny Girl. I no. Um, with a title like that, of course it's degenerate. And I heard it's all charter school propaganda anyway. <laughs> Friends to girlfriend. Absolute banger. Probably the best harem ever written. <laughs> uh, Tatami Galaxy. That's some incel cringe. I'm not in for it. And uh, Doctor Slump. Sorry, Akira Toriyama. We don't care about that work. <laughs> needed to be in English. So yeah, if it's not in English, what's the point? So so what we know, Shield Hero good, Rent-A-Girlfriend good, Rascal Tatami Galaxy slump trash. <laughs> so I, We've solved it. Yeah, so the conclusion we can come to is just the whole anime industry is ruined at this point. We're just disappointed. It's, it's just terrible, but can we make it better? That's the question. Can we fix anime? And I think the first question we have to ask, can we fix ourselves? First off, this is a con. Please, take a shower. Use deodorant. It's very important. We're I can so smell brave you. This isn't the pandemic anymore. I can smell. We're in person. I know someone at the Unpopular Opinions panel yesterday advocated not using deodorant. Yeah, I that. Yeah, that don't listen to him. Use Second, deodorant. Take your waifus and put them where they belong. Yes, even Nicolas Cage. He's incredible. I, 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 it took me six months to throw it out, but I'm so happy that I did. It really freed up my character. Uh, and then uh, this. Come on, at least use people from the new canon, not the old canon. <laughs> but to be honest, like the anime industry, this is a representation of it. Like if we were in the Event Horizon, we could we could do like one of those cool sci-fi slingshot maneuvers to save the anime industry. But no, we we went into the middle. There's no getting out of that. Anime is gone forever, and it's it's going to be bad forever. So we we appreciate you coming to our panel, and uh, we and, we we like screaming at you and, for the last and hour. presumably the last anime convention because we've proved it's over. So uh, if you would like, uh, we would like to thank uh, Carl. Oh wow, we didn't put our other panels on this. No, oh, that's that's my fault probably. We'd like to thank Carl Barks for inventing anime, your mom for all the fun we had last night, uh, Jojo for his various bizarre adventures, you. Do we really want to thank them? Mm, I think I don't smell them, so I think they took a shower, so they deserve to be thanked. Okay, SakuraCon for giving us panels, and Beyblade for inventing sports. <laughs> uh, you can follow us on what, whatever that is. Or come grab No, no, our OnlyFans is a Rickroll. That's just a link to our OnlyFans. Uh, so we have a few more panels today. Yeah, thank you. We have um, Sonic and Unfortunate History at 245, and that's in Arc Chelen. We have Let's Talk About Harems, which is just this, but harems only, <laughs> at 6 in Summit 440. And then we have Pokemon Live, Death of the Musical, which is about Pokemon Live, a stage play for Pokemon that existed for some reason. And that is at 8.45 in Arc 307. And then Ash can't catch them tomorrow at like 2 or something. I don't know, whatever, man. Um, we have a few more minutes. So, so if anyone has any questions, has any hot takes they would like to share, disagreements. Or if you uh, just want us to yell at you. Yeah, some people I, are into that for some I reason. love yelling at people. And the best one gets a, a, a pedal point, I guess. Yeah. We have to give those away. All right, Mr. Hat, what do you want? All right, guys. So I just want to say you forgot to mention the best is a Kai ever, the one who founded it all and the one who brought color to the to the big screen. The Bible, the, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 that's a classic. But the Bible is not was an first. anime. <laughs> Wait, it's not. It did, yeah. Good. Just bad color. It also brought, you know, really. I mean, but like, Isekais, you don't get to come back. Yeah, she came back. Yes. Hey, what's up? I was wondering if you guys have any uh, very mean things you want to say to someone who likes Gundams too much? 
I can take hmm. zombie things. Whatever. See, my, my friend who is the most into Gundam is also my friend who is the most into racism and measuring skulls. Oh, so, oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's, that's, me, uh, me too. <laughs> you're, you're into measuring skulls? You know that your friend is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> I have a theory as to why all those isekais are based on video games. They're all trying for the same video game tie-ins of a Nintendo Wii. <laughs> oh, God. So wait, they're still trying to get Wii exclusive games? Yes. Checks out. The Wii is the best-selling console of all time. No. No. Not anymore? No, the PS2 is. Oh. Yeah, the, the Wii sold 101 million units. The PS2 sold over 150. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the Wii got, the Wii got spanked. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It, it only outsold the PS3 and the 360 by 15 to 20 million units. It didn't even do that well in its own generation. Yes. You can, you can lower it. It's, I, I believe in you. All right. Well, then we'll see what you guys think saying about how politics are handled in the and anime. Mm -hmm. okay, so basically, Basically, my question is like, how would you compare like how political themes were handled like that back then, where it's, it's universal, whereas like, in, today, in today, but especially in the localizations. You you can't do a good job handling politics in anime these days because nobody has any media literacy. Uh, look at the Attack on Titan fandom. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, Ma Mashal's QAnon propaganda. No one believes it. See, you're having trouble with it. You you need to get it, man. I, I read Mash. I read Mash, but I don't know. I don't know the fuck you going on. But well, it's probably for the best. It's you a don't know QAnon. They're course. harvesting the adrenochrome of children in the secret basement of a school. That is a QAnon conspiracy. All right, all right. Well, well, I mean, like I said, I don't have a full 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 thing on that, so we can just agree to disagree. <laughs> no, we can't. You're just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grab one. Yeah. All right. Thank you. What's your favorite season at Jackie Chan Adventures? <laughs> well, you're getting the pedal point. <laughs> Not four. <laughs> I'm just curious. What do you hate about four? Uh, Drago's annoying. I mean, I just love one because this is the classic. Yeah, yeah, it's classic. One, one is classic. Um, it's also the one that's easiest to watch on YouTube. It's actually easiest to listen to also. Yeah. You don't have to lift the screen. <laughs> Congratulations for <laughs> for appreciating Jackie Chan Adventures. You win a prize. How did he know? Did he go to our other panels? No, I went. To, I went to your uh, one yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He went yeah. to another panel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're gonna leave then because no one else has anything to say to us. And I'm very upset. Well, I'm thank gonna you. Go cry. Thank you for coming, everyone. Have a good con. <laughs> yes, please take a card. Thank you very much. We printed them to give to people. We need to get rid of them. Nonsense. You as well. <laughs>